Hi and welcome. Fun, fitness, wellness and inspiration. We're going to kick off with some wellness, we're going to go on to some fitness and then we're going to have lots more fun. Now life is full of ups and downs and we often don't appreciate the ups without having the downs. Today we're going to have some tips on staying positive and looking on the bright side with author and speaker Andrew Jobling. Now the fitness segment today is on the floor so you might want to make sure you clear a space so you don't bump into the furniture and we will show you how to safely get down and up from the floor. Then lastly, we catch up again with Melissa, the Prosecco Queen. And this week, we're going to look at how to maximize the Prosecco experience. How to make a spritz with Prosecco and what not to eat with Prosecco. Get ready to laugh, move and learn. Now we've been having some challenging times. It's been tough. Just how do you keep yourself going through the tough times? How do you keep your spirits up when you're going through the tough times? Well, Andrew today is going to be sharing with us some tips and strategies on how to look on the brighter side. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you, Carol. Wonderful to be here for this wellness zap and a very important topic today is how do we look on the bright side or how do we look through a different lens or a different filter from a different perspective because the reality is no matter what stage of life you're at no matter where you are there's going to be challenges every day is going to present challenges adversity problems and you can look at them as challenges, adversity or problems, or you can look at them as opportunity, or you can look at them as lessons, or you can look at them as some sort of positive. And it's all about the filter with which you look at things through. So you're going to get your little glasses and you're going to put on your positive filter glasses. Okay. And this is how you do it. It's very, very simple. When something happens in your life or with there's conflict with someone or something happens that's not ideal or not what you would choose and you feel some sort of negativity where it's anxiety or stress or fear or uncertainty, what that means, that's your body telling you that you've put on the wrong coloured glasses. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with feeling fear, anxiety, stress, uncertainty what that is is your body again it's telling you hey we need to look at this from another angle we need to there's something not right there's something we need to be aware of but that's when we need to go okay how do i look at this from another perspective what can i be grateful for what lesson is there to learn and what opportunity might there be you know so let me give you an example. I go to the letterbox far too regularly and I pick, you know when you go to the letterbox and you take out a letter and you go, oh, I know this is bad. Have you ever had that feeling when you go, well, this is a bad letter? And in that letter is a speeding fine. Okay, now the first, what's the first reaction to a speeding fine? Probably anger. <laughs> Probably anger at yourself maybe for speeding, but certainly anger at it's not my fault, it's those police officers. You know, when you're only going five to 10 k's over the speed limit, you get angry because why are they chasing the real criminals? Why are they sending me a speeding fine? But that's going to lead you to an anger or an anxiety. Okay, so you stop and go, okay, well, I'm feeling anxiety. What am I thinking about? What's my perspective? I'm capturing that emotion. And now I'm going to look at it. And now I'm going to ask myself, so what's positive here? What's the good here? Or what can I be grateful for? Well, number one, I'm grateful I'm alive. Number two, I'm grateful that there are police out there that are enforcing the law. Number three, I'm grateful that I can pay it. And maybe there's a lesson. And that lesson is maybe I need to slow down. So all of a sudden, I've looked at the situation which has caused some anxiety and stress and seemingly negativity, 
and I've been able to turn it into a positive. You know, if you are in a relationship, as as many of us are, and you have a partner that might be nagging or arguing or trying to get you to do something you don't want to do, you can get aggravated. Or you can be grateful they care enough to say something. You know, if you lose a job, you can get angry about it or you can be grateful that there's probably another better job out there. So my message is very simple. It's easy to look on the bright side if you put the right glasses on, put your perspective glasses on. Whenever you feel any sort of negativity, stress, anxiety, fear, anything, that's an indication that you look, you've got the wrong glasses on. Take those ones off, put on your positive glasses, look for the opportunity, look for the lesson and look for the thing there is to be grateful for. And if you do that, I guarantee you, you're going to have a far better experience of life. You're going to get better results. You're going to be a nicer person to be around and you're going to be a far, far healthier person. So Carol, tell us a little bit about how you deal with, you know, when some sort of adversity strikes. Well, you know, there's that saying that one door closes, another one opens. I mean, it gets used over and over again, but Having that perspective, you think, oh, that hasn't worked out. Well, I'm going to move on. There must be other opportunities. And focusing on the new opportunities. Try not to dwell on the past, but focusing on the new opportunities. So that concept in your head, too, of just closing the door. So close the door on it, move on. So just close the door, put it aside, and move on. So that's basically one of the things that I do. <laughs> So, Andrew, that was fantastic. So, everybody out there, keep your spirits up. Keep looking on the positive side. I'm sure you've got some great tips there now. So, we're in this together. And thanks for watching the Wellness App. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Carol. and abs, which is down on the floor. If you want to do some of this standing up, let's look at some options. When you do the leg raises, you can hold the back of the chair and just lift your leg to the side. Now, when you do this, just make sure that you're pushing out with your heel rather than your toe. So you're just lifting out to the side with your heel, and that's it. When it comes to the abs, you can do the sitting on the chair so while you're on the chair, put your hand behind your waist, pull your tummy in so you're pushing against your hand. And once you get the used to that, you can take your hand away, just pull your tummy in and relax. So when we're doing this on the floor, you just pull your tummy in and relax. Great for supporting your back, helping to prevent back pain as well. So let's do hips and abs. Today. So I thought I'd show you how to get down to the floor so you've got less stress on your knees and your back. So put one foot forward, hands on the thigh, lower it down onto one knee, both knees, hands, put your bottom down and slide it out and relax. And we're ready to go. So legs straight on the top, put the heel to the ceiling. Put the toe down to the ground. Let me go. Lift. 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 That's it. Just keep thinking of the heel to the ceiling. And we're working the gluteus medius here, helping to support the whole of the hip joint. So this is great for someone like myself heading for a hip replacement to help stabilise the hip area. Just do as many as you can and then have a rest if you get tired.
Now I'm going to hold it up. So you're going to take the knee down right opposite the chest here and push back. So it's down and back. Down. Keep it going. So if you do get tired, just rest the leg. Just a little back. We'll just do a few more. Okay, now you can roll over to the back. I'm just going to swivel around. Face the other way. Bend the knees. Relax the head. Straight leg on top. Toe pointing down to the floor. Lift. Lift. That's it. You should start to feel it right there. Lift. Lift. Keep it going. Do what we did before. Take the knee down opposite the chest. Down and back. Down, back, down. That's it. a few more. Okay. Bend the knees, roll over onto the back. I'm going to do some abs. Hands up, keep the head up, looking out just over the top of the knees. See if you can keep the head in this position, like you've got a kiss distance there. Up. So we're just doing little ones. Just watch out for the cat. You might jump on your stomach any minute. So strengthening abs. More resistance. And a few more. Okay, now we're going to do some work on the glutes. Okay. Lift the bottom up. Up. Down. Up. Down. Squeeze, down, squeeze, and down. That's it. Roll over onto your side. And this is how we get up. We get up onto our knees like this. Up onto the knees. One leg forward and push up. Now, to get up, you could use a chair if your knees are a bit dodgy. So, you could use a chair to push up or the thigh. So, push up. And that's it. We'll see you again tomorrow. Welcome to Living Life. Now, last week, we had a chat with Melissa, the Prosecco Queen. 
and she explained to us the difference between Prosecco and other sparkling wines and told us how it was made. We also found out that you could be in a Prosecco masterclass drinking a lovely Prosecco with your friends all around Australia or the world via Zoom and she even runs masterclasses where you can be speaking live with the Italian winemaker in Italy. Hi Melissa and welcome to Over 50 So What. <laughs> Hi, how are you today? I love that idea of uh, meeting the winemaker too, sitting over there in yeah. the vineyard in Italy. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah it's, it was really lovely. And, uh, you know, the Italians are one of the most connected nations I can think of. They certainly have their internet sorted out no matter where you are. You're in the middle of nowhere in a vineyard, high up on a hill. And he's like, yeah, I can hear you perfectly. No problem. Now tell us about your vintage caravan bar, the Van de Vino. Van de Vino. Um, so she's a little bonded wood caravan um, and we bought her about four years ago. We actually had it custom made um, and it's just a very cute little bar that we um, travel around to. We do weddings, we do birthdays, um, we do corporate events, we do festivals um, and, yeah, we just turn up full of wine and start serving it up. Now, you also founded the Prosecco Festival about three or four years ago now. I did. I, did. I was just sitting there one day and I went, you know what, I'm just going to do it myself. And um, because I know so many of the Prosecco producers, because I've been, you know, drinking all their wine for so long, it was very easy for me to just call them up and say, hey, I've got this crazy idea. Um, if I create a Prosecco Festival, will you come? And they're like, well, that sounds great. So I just rang, you know, 20 different people and asked them to come and they all said yes. So that was amazing. And we ended up, I think we had over 50 different Proseccos in, in the festival. That's the most amazing way for me, I think, to show, the, to be able to educate people about Prosecco because a lot of the time you just go, oh, I'll have a glass of Prosecco and it's like, can I have a can of Coke? You don't really, it's just a thing. You don't realise there's so many different styles and that each winemaker will make it slightly differently. And so to be able to go and have 50 different wines in front of you, to then have them side by side, you know, have a sip of each one, you can really start kind of realising how many different flavours there are that you might not have realised and that there is so much more to it than just, you know, cheap fizz because it's not... It's not what I would call cheap. I would call it affordable. Um, and so there are differing prices. You can pay $15 for some and you can pay $30 for others. It'll be where the grapes are from or, you know, all sorts of things that will determine what, what the price is. If it's a more boutique, you know, winery that doesn't have a lot of Prosecco grapes, then there's will be like a more exclusive, smaller batch of it. So you it, it ends up being more expensive, but it's all made by hand. So... Um, to be able to do the festival it really was to, to educate people about um, it's not just cheap fizz, it's not too sweet, there's so many different styles that you can try that will really um, give you an insight into how many different ways that it can be made and what can be done to it. So, and then of course we had all the food to go with it. So I was like, hmm, what goes with Prosecco? Everything. Um, but, well, it does. But um, that was, so we had like pizza and we had um, caviar and oysters. So, you know, seafood, that kind of stuff. And then we had Prosecco flavored cannoli and Aperol Spritz gelato and cheese. And uh, we even had a salami that was made with Prosecco in it. So with the current situation, are you you're gonna do some pop-up Prosecco festival? Is that what's gonna happen? Um, we're looking at doing um, a smaller pop-up version, maybe at the end of March, um, but then I will just do some smaller events and I'm even thinking about just doing like a something down in Geelong um, at, a, at a like a function centre or something down there where they've got a big capacity and we could have maybe, you know, a couple of hundred people come through and do something and then do something like that down Bayside as well so that it's sort of spreading it out to different areas sounds great so to finish off with you've already mentioned the, the things to eat with prosecco you've basically said everything goes with prosecco <laughs> it kind of does except chocolate some reason well it's not some reason it's very acidic uh prosecco and and pr chocolate just needs something a bit different but anything else go for it <laughs>
So what about the temperature and the type of glass? Are, you, are there any recommendations there? Prosecco is best served ice cold. Um, Chardonnay is one of those wines where it can do with a little bit of uh, coming a bit more to room temperature because it allows the flavours to develop in a really positive way. But Prosecco doesn't benefit from that. The, if, you, if it gets warm, it, it doesn't taste great. It needs to be icy cold. Um, and... I, you know, a champagne flute is great. If you've, my favourite shaped glass is a tulip shape. So instead of going straight up and down, it sort of has a bowl like that, but then goes back up into the, into the narrow top. And that's just to let the air get in to the wine and sort of um, allow the oxygen to get on the surface of the wine, which means that you'll be able to smell more of the flavours. So the smaller the opening on the glass, um, the less air you can get across the surface of the wine and then it's harder to sort of smell it. And as we know, half of our taste is actually smell. So that whole experience of like, you know, smelling what's in the glass, um, I think adds to the experience of when you actually end up tasting the wine. So um, definitely something that allows a little bit more air in the glass or just don't fill it all the way to the top. Now, you, you also do spritzes with it, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. So the Aperol spritz is the big one um, that everybody knows um, and that's made with soda water and ice and Prosecco and then um, some Aperol, which is a liqueur. I know some people get frightened off because they think it's going to be very strong in alcohol, but a liqueur and a spirit are two different things. An Aperol is only 11% alcohol as opposed to, say, a gin, which is about 40. So it's not strong like a gin. It's the same level of alcohol as the Prosecco itself. So it's, it's, for me, it's like a cocktail that I can have, you know, two or three of instead of a normal cocktail where I shall only have one off. Um, and it, because it's full of soda water as well, it, it ends up being quite a refreshing drink, um, uh, especially on a hot day. And you normally have like a, a squeeze of um, orange in there as well or blood orange. Um, and it's it's kind of like a bitter orange flavour. But then when you mix it with the Prosecco, it kind of just tastes delicious. Oh, you make me want to go and get something out of the fridge right now. <laughs> I know, I'm sitting here going, gosh, I wish I had a glass of something right now. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming on the show, Mel. Um, I knew it would be fun and I'd learnt even more again than I have. Awesome. So we look forward to seeing you again next time, but next time we'll make sure we have a glass with us. That would be way better. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for watching Over 50, So What? And you thought that chocolate went with everything. Well, maybe not everything. If you have any topics you'd like to see on the show, just drop us a note through Facebook or through the website, carolohalloran.com. Now, recently you might have seen the oldest man in Australia, Dexter Kruger, turned 111, 111. And he started writing books at the age of 86 and he's still writing books at the age of 111. If you know any inspiring people who you think would inspire others and you'd like to see them on the show, please drop us a note through Facebook or through the website. And if you want more information about Andrew Jobling and the Prosecco Queen, then please go to our website, carolohalloran.com. Now, all show replays are also on the website, on Facebook, and on YouTube. You'll also find more fitness videos on YouTube, over 50, so what? I'm Carol, keep active, have fun, and stay connected. And we'll see you next week. watching our TV show. Be sure to hit subscribe and then you'll never miss an episode. Jump on Facebook, join our group, get in on the fun, fitness, wellness and inspiration. I'm Carol, over 50, so what?